Welcome to uh, what is always one of the, the favorite days of the year for our staff. Uh, I want to thank the PTSA for putting on this wonderful event. Give them a hand for all the Um, we had uh, a, a wonderful incoming ninth grade parent night last night. We had a hundred parents show up for the tour at 5:30, the optional tour, and we had like 200, 250 in the auditorium. Um, really, a, yeah, Carrie Miller, your parent to be seen. It was a really great vibe. Uh, Lauren said that she had a tough day at home and then went to work and felt better. It's one of the yeah. first times that work made somebody feel better. Yeah. You know? <laughs> That's pretty cool. Well, welcome everybody. We, we have uh, a, a very busy program day, so we're going to get started. I will say uh, we don't have many announcements. We have the weekly memo for those kind of things. I uh, just want to appreciate all the work that's gone into AP testing, IV testing, starting SVAP testing. Uh, we have prom coming up this weekend. We have league finals for swimming. We had the DPA welcome events this week. Uh, what elections going on? Uh, everything under the sun is happening in May. So. Just keep smiling all through it. <laughs> uh, it's a great time. So uh, thank you for all that. I did also announce I did turn off the bells. So if we go a little late, we're just going to finish and we can start second period a little bit later if we have to. Is that okay there, buddy? All right. All right. So uh, I'm going to turn over to Gabrielle. Good morning. Welcome this morning and thank you for letting us share your staff meeting um, with the PTSA and the Honorary Service Awards. Um, today we're really honored to um, have seven individuals that we're going to highlight. But we also want you to know from the PTSA, the seven individuals that we're going to highlight, we've also as a PTSA given money with their name to the state PTA. And that state PTA scholarship is for teachers, for students, for nurses um, to utilize a scholarship so they can have continued education. So we're passing it forward to not only your community, but the state community too. So we're really excited about that. And this is going to be kind of a self-run um, presentation. So I'm going to start off with the first person who's going to come up and announce an award, um, Rochelle. And then if you're after Rochelle, your name's on the program. If you can kind of get prepared, we appreciate that. So Rochelle. nice to be here and not be the one running it. So our first recipient is one of the very best people that I know. Um, her calm exterior and warm demeanor um, drew me to her instantly when I got to start working with her about five years ago. And I really can't say anymore without just giving away who it is. So I'm going to have Irene come up here and stand up. today, so he can't be here this morning, but Ethan and Seth are here. So Irene has served on numerous PTA boards and site councils um, at the elementary, junior high, and high school levels, and done just about anything anyone has ever asked of her, um, including serving on things like Allies for Equity, doing lunch carts, um, sitting through district committee meetings and the list goes on. Um, she has refused to accept a nomination for this award the past two years. <laughs> but this year, the committee overruled her behind her back. <laughs> because, as you can see, she was already helping with this event as well, because that's who Irene is. She helps with everything. Um, one of her champions wrote about her that, I work with Irene on the lunch carts, where she is a regular and always subs in when people can't make their shift. She even drags her husband along to help. <laughs> and her boys. <laughs> um, this year, she served as the executive vice president of the PTSA and also took on the band booster role of marching band liaison, uh, which is a truly thankless job with countless hours of work. When not helping at school, Irene can be found helping at other nonprofit um, agencies like Angel Angels Bearing Gifts, which is a nonprofit that provides gifts on birthdays and holidays to people with. Um, developmental disabilities, um, who don't have other people to remember them. And it seems like everywhere I go, everywhere I go, someone knows Irene and it's always related to the fact that she's helping with something. But in my opinion, what truly sets Irene apart in my eyes is her unwavering commitment to students and teachers at DP. I have seen her give rides home, pay for meals, 
um, and single-handedly make sure that kids are included, safe, and cared for. And I always know I can count on her when I need a hand. And I know, without a doubt, I'm not the only one that's relying on her. Time and time again, um, as PTSA president, the previous two years, she could be heard saying, it's for the kids to make sure that the PTSA keeps our eyes on the true mission of impacting the lives of children. So it is my pleasure and such an honor to give this award to Irene. <laughs> Ticket movie pass to movie theaters. <laughs> Nina. 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 This is John Dent, media teacher, as well as JV tennis coach. Um, now you can do your drum roll, because today we are honoring a very special parent and VP volunteer. I totally lied to him to get here, but it's Rip Cho, so I got him like... John. Uh, and he saw the program and it was like, oh, this is so awkward. Um, but anyway, so chances are, if you have had any of these lovely Cho girls in your classes, you have probably met Rip and his wife, Sylvan. But in case you haven't met Rip before, I wanted to provide some easy, memorable descriptors of the wonderful and special person that Rip is. So the first one. <laughs> when I started at DP, uh, one of the duties that I inherited was advisor of National Honor Society and California Scholarship Federation. I didn't know what I was getting into, but soon learned that NHS and CSF are a big deal at DP. Um, in fact, the honor societies comprise a good percentage of our school and has 12 parent volunteers to assist with organizing and interpreting the data and the records for our students. Something that stood out to me as I began to understand the whole process is there's a lot of paper um, that was being used with each qualifying student's information and it was all handwritten by each one of those advisors. It was really labor intensive for those parent volunteers and where's my English department? Hold up. They will tell you they had to help twice a year distribute all of those papers. Now, when his daughter Chloe came in as a freshman, Rip volunteered um, to be one of those parent volunteers. And after one semester, he was determined to make our membership process better. So first phase was creating spreadsheets. 
that consolidated all the data so that papers could be created with a mail merge. If you're Excel, that's like huge, right? No more handwriting. And then RIP also created files for each advisor that created this whole history for each semester, for each one of their students that said whether they qualified for NHS and CSF. Now this year, working with John, um, RIP to help NHS and CSF go paperless through Formstack, so pretty awesome. Then my see, environmental, we're good. Um, so thanks to RIP, um, NHS and CSF are functioning smoothly. We're saving paper and streamlining the process for students. So moving on. In addition to helping with NHS and CSF, um, he also helps with the DP Engineering Academy as a mentor for the supply chain team. And he works alongside a group of students to keep track of inventory and ordering supplies. And as one student put it, he kept us on track. Um, Rip helped them organize things, and students describe him as hardworking, passionate, and dedicated. Now Donna Boyd, who's the parent who took over from Rip, shared her appreciation for Rip to his dedicated volunteering. <coughs> When she took over, Rip continued working with and supporting her and the team and backed them up for whatever was needed. And in Donna's words, whatever it was, Rip was always there to make sure things were done properly and in an organized manner. I don't know what I would have done without him. Okay, next. Um, <laughs> so I had this like ongoing joke with Rip because me and Chloe are freshmen, so in my mind I'm like, I only have four years, so um, I suggested adding another child to their family <laughs> around fifth grade age or so. Um, but he assured me that he is committed to staying with us and to keep helping me, which I really appreciate. Um, and I know that I can believe him because he still helps out at Foothill School. And how long do you think it's been since these girls have been at Foothill School? Um, there's even some current DP students who um, remember RIP, helping them at Foothill School, um, working with the robotics team, the math Super Bowl teams, also at La Colina robotics team, and they attribute their love of STEM fields due to their experience and encouragement from RIP. And I look forward to get to continue working with RIP in the future, as well as his wife, Sylvan, who he roped in as an advisor this year. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna hand it over to John to go over our next three words for real. So if any of you have ever worked with the district, you know that things don't happen quickly. <laughs> Unless you have somebody like Rip involved. So last summer, Rip arrived at the tennis courts with his two ninth, ninth graders and said, this is ridiculous. Why does this look like this? this? The conditions are horrible. And those are the conditions. They were just horrible. It's an entrance to our school. And Rip said, I want to change this. And I said, okay, great. <laughs> and and our, our head coach said, you know, I've been trying to change it, trying to figure out a way to change it for 15 years. Good luck. And Rip said, I'm going to change it. The district came back and working with Bill and working with Dan, the district came back and said, well, if you can raise $10,000, then you can, we can work on changing it. And Rip said, okay. And he raised $10,000 in a month. In a month. But as you know, even though the district says that something might happen, that still doesn't always happen. And so, Rip said, I'm going to make sure it happens. And so Rip was working with Bill, working with Dan, and trying to figure out with the district, how can we make this happen? And they said, okay, well, we're redoing the the parking lot over winter break. So we can do that right alongside with the parking lot. Well, as we all know, fires came and all those th all the delays and all the things. So I said, Rip, thank you so much. I, I love your passion and maybe we'll get it next year. And he said, no, we're having it now. And take a look at what it looks like now. Oh, sorry. <laughs>
it took more than just pushing the district. It took a lot of hard labor, which he was a part of with his whole family and the tennis team and the coach. But wow, the facilities and the entrance to our school are so much better thanks to Rick. And can't thank you. super proud of our program. It is very successful. And one of the reasons Avid is successful is because we get to work from time to time and partner with, from time to time, an organization called Pathways. Pathways to uh, College is a UCSB program that many of you may not be aware of. <coughs> it is part of the UCSB Office of Education Partnership, and it provides UCSB students as tutors to come into our classroom many of whom are DP grads, by the way, giving back. Uh, and it also has an after-school homework and study center staffed by those same tutors, which is very popular and very successful. And here at DP, Pathwork, or Pathways is run by a remarkable woman named Adrienne Arguijo Morgan. Adrienne is officially on campus only Mondays and Fridays in the Career Center. But so much of what she does is outside of her regular working routine. She establishes relationships with her Pathways students. She works and helps guide them through the rigors of high school and on into college in the college applications process. She spends an incredible amount of time outside of regular working hours working with students on their college applications, provide, providing guidance on and editing their college applications uh, through the eyes and perspective of a UC SA application reader. She's read hundreds of essays. She gives out college and financial aid advice and even drives up from her home in Camarillo on weekends to meet with students at coffee shops around Goleta to work on their college applications and to better meet their needs. I told her today that we were giving out a scholarship to a kid in order to get here to get her here at quarter to eight in the morning. That was a total lie, Adrian. I'm sorry. <laughs> the truth is, there are legions of DP students currently finding success in college and finding success in their careers beyond college because of the work and personal care of Adrian Arguijo Morgan. To those students and to those of us lucky enough to be able to work with her, she is truly an amazing and unsung hero at DP. And for this, I am proud and thrilled to introduce her as a recipient of the honor.
testing. <laughs> um, okay, so um, good morning. I'm Zane Stoll. Uh, I've had many of you my, as my teachers, and I've done a lot of school presentations, but I don't think I've done a school presentation to many of my teachers. <laughs> so, um, my mom gave me the opportunity to talk about one of my favorite teachers I've had for the past four years. Um, not that any of you are less than that, but um, he is the most unique instrumental teacher I've had in my whole classes that I've had since fifth grade. Um, both from his background and the way that he interacts with the students and gives them a voice to try and try something new. Um, from coming from San Marcos as an assistant principal to seeing a need as our last uh, instrumental teacher, Mr. Rose, was retiring, to so filling that need, to coming over here to DP, and not only innovating our marching band so that we have a new roster for next year's Ooh. marching band. Okay. <laughs> uh, but he, had, he directs all the instrumental programs from concert band, to Winter Guard, to Dance Guard, to Orchestra, and Jazz, um, with help from other staff members, but directing all these and being able to listen to other students' interests and their suggestions. And um, personally, I haven't been able to be in all these classes, but at least with Jazz, we've been able to try new things, like combining two songs that were written by different people but have very similar titles just one word added to them. <laughs> so, you know, we got to try new things, changing of an ending from a song, um, and multiple students have been able to suggest charts to Ms. Yorsky, and he's pulled through more than once. And for some of those, we've been, been able to play those for more than just one day as just a trial, but for sometimes weeks or months, and been able to try and change them and make them new. So, um, not only has he innovated our program through opening up students' accessibility to being able to talk to him about all these things and the availability to other students, but he's also changed what our spring trip has been. Uh, in the past, we've gone to Reno up in Nevada, and well, it's a great gig. Uh, sometimes things get old. So, of course, he thought of a much more interesting place for us to go that was way farther than Nevada. <laughs> uh, for those of you who are any, have anything to do with instrumental program, we went to Boston this year, across the country, on a red-eye flight, and we were able to go there for a week. So not only did we get to spend time uh, experiencing music and competing there and seeing all kinds of other bands from the East Coast, but we also got to experience Boston for the time that we were there. We got to go to a jazz club during the night. <laughs> I'm not sure if you can tell, but I'm extremely tired, so <laughs> kind, of, kind of letting my agitation flow into that comedy. But, um, Ms. Tagarski is a teacher I'm proud to have had for the past two years, and I'm glad to have him for this next semester. So, uh, I don't know where the award is, but I'm proud to present it to you. <laughs> just got a really cool, obnoxious blue and, uh, blue and yellow Hawaiian shirt. I thought, nah, man, I want to fly under the radar. I'm not going to wear that to the staff meeting. But I will put on this, like, DP shirt that I got somewhere. I think somebody left it in the staff room. So I guess I didn't get to fly under the radar.
next gift card is a $25 gift card to Hollister Brewing Company. <laughs> an award to someone who is great in an abundance of ways. I'd like to start by describing her with some anecdotes from her colleagues. She has been the crown jewel to the DP family for many years. Her tireless help, taken on multiple preps each and every year, helped showcase her tenacity and her team first philosophy. I have worked with her in a cohort and she stayed this last year so that she could graduate her senior class with distinction and honors. She is my hero. She is my mentor, my colleague, and my friend. I have had the pleasure of working with her since I started at DP four years ago, and I do not know where I would be without her leadership and support. I would love to write an impressive list of committees on which she serves, but I actually lost track a long time ago. I'm not even sure she knows just how many committees she's on. She's the woman who will run you over with a Chromebook cart if you do not get out of the way. She's the woman who zoomed but so hard she broke her own foot. And she puts her heart and soul into every task she takes up. As most of you probably have figured out, I've been describing Miss Gretchen Hess, my Adam <laughs> the absolute pleasure of being a student of Ms. Hess. And let me tell you all, it's been a blessing. She is selfless, strong-willed, kind, determined, caring, strict, and every other positive word you could think of. Not only have I been her student, but I've worked on committees with her, all in which she's motivated me to join. She's motivated me to do a lot, actually, and I don't know if she realized just how great an effect she's had on me. I'm not a timid person. I'm strong-willed and determined, just like my avid mom. But I struggle, and I've been struggling since freshman year. My point is that through those struggles, I found my person here at DP. She has helped me through dark times, and I could barely talk about I could barely talk about. She's found a light in my life. <laughs> Sorry. When I had no idea, it was there. And she's made it clear time and time again that it mattered to her. She is so nurturing and has such a beautiful heart that it was almost impossible for me not to gravitate towards her. I let myself be vulnerable with you. Mama Hess, and that can be hard sometimes, but you have given me the best advice throughout the last four years, and it's helped mold me into the student leader that I am. You are one of the reasons I am so successful as a student today. Last week, during the SOS training, we were prompted with a question, asking if there was an adult on campus we trusted. Of course, I immediately put you. <laughs> then I thought to myself, what about all the other students that don't have a Miss Hess? What if I never had a Miss Hess? It was just a reminder that I'm here because of you. It's hard to put into words how much you mean to me, not just me, but all of us. You've constantly had all our backs for the last four years, and we could never be more appreciative. You have taught us life lessons that we will forever keep with us. You've given so much more than just an education to us. We could never say enough how grateful we are for that. We love you, and although we're going to be moving on from our high school years, there will forever be a bond between us. I remember that you said you didn't want to have kids, but you do. <laughs> you will always have 26 of them. You're just stuck with us. Thank you. Don't you think 
I'm not going to take this opportunity to grab the mic. <laughs> Thank you, DC, so much for allowing me to be an avid mom. Thank you, all of you, for letting me be an avid mom um, and for keeping me here for this extra year so that we could have it together. Um, uh, ten years, you've allowed me to be bossy and join all the committees and affect as much positive change as I possibly could, and I just want to thank you for having that faith in me and allowing me that opportunity. I want to thank Bill Woodard and Sean Carey for being the best administrators I've ever had. I want to thank my PLC. Team 10, you are absolutely amazing, and I just, I, I hope for everyone else who's on the PLC journey that you someday get to the point that I get to where every Thursday is a pleasure, and what we do together to enjoy one another and to make learning more fun for students means the world to me and I love you women so much, so much. Um, and I want to thank everyone who has worked with me on Allies for Equity, especially Stephanie Henderson and Mr. Woodard and Sean Carey and Ms. G because that is, if when they think about a legacy at DP, that is, that is what means the most to me is leaving that in your trusted hands to make it grow and make the school a safer and more welcoming place for all students. And I want to thank, as my students call him, Cat Boy, my partner. <laughs> uh, I spend a lot of time at home not talking to him and instead staring at papers. Uh, the commitment that teaching takes means a lot, but it is incredibly valuable, as you can see from the wonderful, amazing students behind me. Oh, uh, hold on, I have to thank Perry, too. Um, <laughs> But uh, it doesn't. It, it it is not easy to be the partner of a teacher, and I appreciate all that you do to support me, and Perry for that amazing speech, and for exactly what you say I do for you, you do for me. Thank you so much for what you and all of your siblings have added to my life. I love you all. I love you, DP, and I will miss you more than you know. Mike, and yes, thank you, Perry. That was a very touching, uh, it's tough to follow, Perry. <laughs> thank you. Okay, so uh, we are here to recognize a very uh, pivotal person, not only in uh, my world, the athletics world, but I think she is pivotal in many areas of the school. Um, as anyone knows that has run an organization, a team, a, a group, or a program, you need the right group of people to step up, help, volunteer. And I have, <clears throat> we have a person that is really stepped up and done a heck of a job. Um, just a couple <laughs> data-driven facts here. Uh, we have 20 sports here, 20 different teams here at Dos Pueblos, and I think she literally has attended every team parent meeting. And as you know, sometimes those parent meetings can go on and on and on. And over the last uh, two years, that's about 40 different parent meetings over those um, uh, two years. You can often find her selling tickets at varsity football games. You can see her sitting at a table. Um, she is the Booster Club membership coordinator for the Athletic Booster Club. She sits at the table at almost at the most athletic events trying to get people to 
support the Dos Bubbles Athletic Department. You can find her, uh, like I said, she's on a, a board member for the Booster Club. She is a board member, uh, was a board member of the Volleyball Booster Club for three years as well. She's on multiple parent committees. She has um, been vital in many of the fundraisers we do, everything from casino night to uh, the holiday tree sales that we've done. Um, and not only athletics, but she is helping with senior breakfast. She's helping with prom. She's helping with um, chaperoning dances. She's involved in this community and in our, in our school community. This person is truly selfless. Um, some people think she actually works here. <laughs> she doesn't work here. She actually has a real job outside of TV. <clears throat> um, she's truly selfless. Uh, she truly cares about the students and the staff of DP. Uh, I want to say most importantly, she is the great mom to two amazing daughters, to Laura and Ashley. Right. Loving wife, wife of Mike. A truly <laughs> selfless act. <laughs> I, was, I was trying to, trying to carefully say this. Everything we love about Mike is because of her. <laughs> and I think uh, there's a little bit of a. I'm trying to figure out. You know, I think it's close, but who actually spends more time here? And I think Mike's got Mike's got a little lead on him, but it's not far. It's not far from him. <laughs> Um, I am here to recognize and to thank and to give an honorary service award for her service for our, to our school for the last four years. And she's and Ashley's only a freshman. I got her for three more years. <laughs> I'd like to recognize and thank Debbie Gerken. something she actually does it better than I could have ever have done it so she makes whoever she's helping she makes you look good so that's <laughs> thank you so much Debbie for all that you do and uh, thank you again. Two prizes this time. Another one is twenty-five dollars to your brewing company, and the winner is Mr. Allers. <laughs> the second one is a twenty-five dollar gift card to Cadario. <laughs> Corella. Thanks. 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 this next honoree on Friday nights from August through November, this year, December. Uh, it's not hard. Uh, you'll see him pacing the sidelines, barking orders to his players, giving the refs a terrible time, inspiring his young men to give more than they ever thought they could, celebrating their triumphs, consoling them in their defeats, many of those. He's a living, breathing Friday Night Lights. <laughs> But if you want to find this next honoree on Friday night from January through July, you'll find him curled up on the couch with the love of his life and high school sweetheart, Jamie Carpio, Aww. watching his favorite trash reality show, Desperate Housewives. <laughs> Sorry, Real Housewives, my bad. Or even on a special night, 
his favorite movie, The Notebook. <laughs> and I know when you think of The Notebook, you think of this year's Honorary Service Award winner, Nate Mendoza. <laughs> came to DP and I learned, uh, met Nate, and you know, I learned he was a Lompoc guy. I, I have a little bit of a hard time with that. Uh, Lompoc beat us in the you know, semifinals when I was a high school junior, uh, 48 to 38, and I got robbed on an interception that would have won the game for our team, and I, I hate Lompoc with a passion. <laughs> and then I'm like, yeah, I'm from Temple City, and he's like, oh, Temple City, yeah, I think Jamie dated a guy from Temple City, too. <laughs> It's true. <laughs> so we didn't start off in the right foot very much. Um, but Nate, Nate has, of course, worn many hats at DP. He's been a paraeducator, special ed teacher extraordinaire, baseball coach, football assistant, varsity head coach, and now dean of students. The record speaks for itself. He was the defensive coordinator for a Channel League championship team in 2010, which was the school's first league title since 79. He and his staff have won the Nat Channel League Coaching Staff of the Year award in 2012, 2016, 2017. He was named South County Coach of the Year in 2016. And of course, this year led the team to a school record 12 wins in a row and a run to the second only in his school history CIF championship appearance. You were at that game, it was epic. Uh, it was an incredible, gutsy coaching performance. That fourth quarter was amazing. Um, it takes a special coach to have confidence in these guys to just run the ball down the team's throat over and over. The same play kept coming for like the whole half. They could not stop it. Um, and it was just an incredible thing. We, we came up a, a little bit short, uh, but that doesn't, it was still, people talk about the moves that Nate made that night. Is that, that was, a, almost um, un never been seen before that you would just do that and it was so it was incredible to watch and um, he his duties uh, as Dean of students are gonna have you know he's gonna have to step down from coaching I know it kills him I know it kills him I've been there myself um, but he's left the program in great hands with coach Keynes he's gonna be up in the booth on Friday nights helping the team I know he's gonna have an impact them going on and on and on this year he took another gutsy move by talking to his players about voluntarily submitting to voluntary drug tests as a way to keep the team all centered on the same goal the whole year. Didn't have to do that. It was inviting maybe some problems that he didn't actually have to undergo, but it was the right thing to do for his program, his kids, and they learned a lot about teamwork, about the importance of sacrifice, about the importance of keeping each other accountable, and those lessons are going to go on and on into their career. <sighs> but having said all that, it was very telling that the multiple staff nominations for Nate this year didn't mention athletics at all. Not one. I mean, they mentioned it a little bit, but it was really focusing on the other things. I'll, I want to read you a few quotes. <coughs> Mr. Mendoza is always, not sometimes, always willing to help the staff with student issues. He is supportive, empathetic, and does not put up with nonsense. <laughs> I do not know where the campus would be without Mr. Mendoza. He is invaluable to DP, and he has helped create our campus tenure and culture. Nate can be counted on you to get, to get things done. He is a leader and the kids love and respect him. He always follows up, his communication is great, and he supports staff at every opportunity. Here the stats speak for itself too. Since Nate took over as Dean of Students, chronic absenteeism rates at our school, students who have missed more than 18 days, have dropped from 20.1% to 12.7%. This year, through March, suspensions at DP were half of what they were last year. And then April hit. <laughs> we're all battle scarred. Look at them in the back. We, we've been through the ringer in April. So, but it's still down for the year. Uh, and Nate does deal with students in crisis that have come out of classes, that have had a, a, a tough situation in class. And, he mentors them, talks to them, gets them off the edge, and actually does the thing that we want to do more than anything else. How do we restore what we broke? How do we make it better? How do we get you back in, on, in the classroom in a, in a positive way? And that is an invaluable skill because it takes, it's a skill, it's an art form to be able to do that. 
uh, because students say a lot of mean things at you sometimes. They, 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 they project their anger or frustration or whatever's going on at home at the person who's sitting in front of them in that admin room, and it's tough. And he's got a knack for doing that really well. And I will just finish by saying more than anything, Nate is a leader who cares deeply about not just being good, but striving for greatness in everything he touches. And it's a testament to him that the students he's led the most are here to help honor him. Their coach, their leader, Nate Mendoza. My name is Heidi Sipes. I just wanted to say thank you all so much for coming. In addition to the awards that we've given them here, they've also all been invited to the Santa Barbara Area Council of PTA's reception to honor them on May 30th at 6 p.m. at the Santa Barbara County Education Office. Thank you again for spending your time here. I appreciate you. Appreciate you. Oh, never finish early. <laughs>